Hello everyone and welcome to another live session of World Creator. I know it's been a uh, quite a bit of time since I've been since I've done another one of these. A lot has happened the past two months. Um, some of which I can't wait to share with you guys up um, at the coming up the next year. So that's going to be some pretty big announcements then, but you'll just have to wait till then to see what we're doing. In today's session, I'm going to be covering as best as I can some understanding to shorelines or beaches and some design methods to achieve a realistic look at how to um, make those in World Creator 2. But first, as in previous uh, live streams, we're going to start off with a couple of announcements about the software. Now, this is uh, straight from the top. Let's see what we got here. I've got a huge list here of big updates coming, hopefully within the uh, next month or so. Let's see, we've got filters can now be seen in the properties panel along with the live preview. So before you actually enable the uh, filter, you can kind of see a quick uh, black and white, I assume just a black and white version of what the filter is going to look like before it actually applies it to the, to the uh, terrain. You can finally do custom object imports along with the highly anticipated media library. More on that in a little bit. Objects can also be placed manually now on the terrain, so instead of it just being fully procedural across the terrain based on your uh, property settings, you can now place them individually like you would with any 3D program. There's um, several new filters, well, I don't know about several, but there's new filters coming, one of which I'm um, really excited about is the height map filter. So you, instead of um, importing a height map via an area, you can do it based on a filter, which produces completely different uh, results, as I'm told, uh, much more realistic results, I believe. And uh, I imagine you would have way more control. More properties and adjustments can be made for objects, such as object distributions and scale based on distances and uh, types of volumes. For example, a uh, forest. In most cases, a forest will have really tall trees trying to capture the light towards the center of the forest and all the new trees, the smaller, younger trees, will be spread out near the edge of the rim of the forest. So you should be able to do stuff like that in the coming update. The same goes for the detail items along with distance blending and gradient shading. So that should be pretty nice as far as being able to render um, more objects in the distance and control the uh, the shading of how they're rendered based on, I believe, the texture below. You can now choose different types of anti-aliasing modes. Um, rendering in general has been greatly improved, especially for objects and details as far as, like I just said, in the distance. Um, this, you can actually now change out the sky texture and so instead of it just being the generated uh, sky texture that comes along with World Creator, you can replace it with something else. Of the custom objects and details that you can now import, there will be support for an insane amount of file types, of which obviously OBJ, FBX, um, and several other file types, I believe, as um, Speedtree file types, I assume is in there, 3DS Max, Maya, uh, several different typical file types that you can import that you would expect to be in there. There's also tessellation effects can now be used as a full mesh to interact with filters or water simulation, which should be pretty cool. Um, all of this, um, all of these changes should be in the next update, which is planned sometime in the coming month ahead, I believe. Um, hopefully sometime around January, but as usual, beta testers will be notified of an early testing phase so you can get your a first hands-on experience with that. And let's, I believe that is it for the announcements. So to break down what we're going to be doing today, in today's session, I am going to be covering as best as I can some understanding to shorelines or beaches and some design methods on how to achieve a realistic look. I know I just said that, but... I wanted to reiterate exactly what we're going to be doing today. Now, I believe that in order to design something realistically, we need to go about it with a holistic approach, meaning we need to think about the natural processes of the shoreline formations and how they would come about. For example, what are the wave effects, the sediment uh, transportation, tidal effects, currents, morphodynamics, etc. If we can understand these processes, we can better design our coastlines. So the best thing that you can do is do lots of research, of course, on the type of location you are modeling for based on the location in the world. 
So Google Earth will be your best friend to reference the type of area you want to design for and obviously your online engine for researching what types of erosion, what types of sediment, rocks, cliffs, you name it, are in that area that you're wanting to design for. But I'm going to be covering some generalizations to general beach profiles, shoreline profiles. Um, that way you can design for it in your programs. But to save you guys some research time, let me show you the Cliff Notes version of some basic understanding to how shoreline formations are essentially formed. So I am here in Photoshop. Let me just tab out of this real quick. Now the prime ingredient to shape of shorelines is as you would expect, erosion. But the ingredients to that erosion is primarily, tab my ingredients thing. Ah, so the prime ingredients of erosion are runoff from rivers and lakes that filter out into the water into the ocean, ocean water and the waves or wave energy and sediment and sediment density. Now, the, the main driving force of these are the waves and wave energy, which waves are currently derived from uh, primarily wind. Wind holds 50 percent of I believe it's 50 percent of how waves are generated in the wave motions, currents and tides. So tides will have a huge effect on how the beach profile is made across different locations in the world. And depending on the location of the world, will have a completely different effect. So the next things up, we are going to go into a more um, specific notion of typical shoreline forms. We're going to actually, sh I'm going to show you how the profile of the basic, most basic structure of the beach is formed. So right here, let me choose my water. We've got the ocean here and the sand profile here. So as wave energy moves inward, it pause for dramatic effect. All right. So as water moves in, that is derived by the winds pushing the water in this direction. The wave energy is essentially slowed down once it hits the sand or the earth, essentially. And so what you have here, once it slows down, the kinetic energy has to move somewhere and it can't just end anywhere. So the profile of the wave essentially comes up like this, as you would expect. So all that water has to come up. And as a result, it's going to pull some of this uh, sand up with it. And then it's going to topple over. And that's how you get your waves. But this uh, point right here, when it pulls that sand with it, it's going to obviously dislodge a piece of this, as well as that sand and sand from the or sediment from the ocean is going to be brought into this wave and it's going to dispense in the rest of the bank here. So what we have is what your profile is once this um, once this wave cuts away some of the sand and this sand is brought up your profile starts to shift along a little bit. So part of this sand is being pulled this way by the ray force and eroded from the wave. And then once it settles back down, it comes up and creates little things which you call dunes. So these little pieces can have wave effects for different, um, no, not dunes, I apologize, bars. These little areas are called bars out in the ocean. Dunes are up here above the sand. So once um, this happens hundreds and thousands of times, the effect gets much more severe. And then you have different shapes of profiles. So this whole process of the sediment being brought up off of the shore, brought back in onto the shore, is called morphodynamics. Fun word. This creates the show, the shore, and beach profiles. So knowing how um, mankind uh, essentially combats 
a lot of the erosion that would happen in more public beaches, they have to know the morphodynamics. They have to know the wave energy, the sediment complexities of that beach so that they can help protect the beach for people like you and me to enjoy the sun on the beach. So this whole process of morphodynamics and understanding the sediment control, the wave control is essentially um, they all have to be in equilibrium after thousands of times this wave, millions of times this these waves come in and hit, they're going to create a balanced equilibrium of sediments coming in and sediments coming out. So like I said, knowing that equilibrium is how coastal erosion control is done, basically. So now that we've established this zone, let's look at exactly what the different pieces of the shore profile is. Our shore profile, as we've learned, we got the bars, which are generated by sediment coming down, coming up, coming down, coming up. These bottom areas are called troughs and another trough. This is a longshore bar and we'll get to that in a minute. The top area here is a dune. Now a dune is going to be generated by really high tides or storm, storm surges that generate a massive push of sand. Now dunes are a natural effect or they could be man-made effects, but the natural effect or both the man-made effect as well is meant to protect the inland basically. So it's a natural occurrence of a sand protection, kind of like a wall. So it helps prevent any further erosion that would be happening upstream or up further on the land. Eventually, all of the uh, sediment that comes down and drains will create the berm. Now that berm, you can have several berms. You can have little subset berms that create like a terraced effect on its way down to the beach. Of which, this zone here, which I'll stretch it out a little bit. This is the beach zone. And let me go ahead and draw a representation of low tide here. All right. So this can represent high tide and this blue line can represent low tide. And we'll get to low tide and high tide in just a few minutes. So the rest of this zone here is called the upper shore. Pardon my writing on this Wacom tablet. It is also called, we could call it the terrace zone. What happened? Oh, the terrace zone, or it's also called the surf zone. And the reason why it's called the surf zone is obviously all these bars that are generated by all of the uh, morphodynamics waves will be created at each point. So when you see the huge waves way out here that little surfer dudes come down on and it dwindles down even further. So the bars are an essential part to helping the not only the morphodynamics both in section and laterally they help generate the massive amount of waves that you and I enjoy. And then beyond this point, this is the lower shore, or also known as the offshore. Now what this is, is basically around, if you look especially around islands, or you can even take the an entire continent like North America or South America or even more so Australia in account, there's always going to be a point where the you'll see the beach profile, whatever that's made of, and then all of a sudden it looks like just a drop. And especially in Google Earth, you can see this. It almost looks just like a drop, and then it continues down to whatever. This drop is the longshore bar. It's generated. It's basically the beginning of not only tectonic movements, but it's 
the end point of where all of your erosion is happening. It's the beginning and the end point of all your erosion that's happening as far as the beach profiles are concerned. So this longshore bar you can see, which we're going to get to in designing in World Creator 2 in a little bit, is a huge part, especially when you look at it from above. It, it houses um, a nice hue around an entire island or an entire landmass. And you can you can really see that it's almost like a cliff edge, as I would say. Also, these areas house a lot of ecosystems, especially in trough areas or right here on the edges. Some of these uh, longshore bars uh, are helped to generate things like coral reefs. So a reef system could be part of this terraced effect way down below. Um, probably not going to be too big of a use case in World Creator 2 unless your end result is to design an underwater environment per se. So <clears throat> unless you're wanting to create aer aerial visuals or have an underwater environment in World Creator 2 or in something like Unity, Unreal Engine or whatever program, you won't have to worry about detailing this too much because all of this is going to be really smooth as far as filters below the waterline. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So this entire process, not entire process, but this entire uh, profile is called the littoral zone. So the main things that we're going to be doing here in a second is we're going to build this profile, and I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do that. So we're going to come into World Creator 2, and this is our starting point that World Creator gives you now. It creates almost a sand color, but you could change that, um, that color to whatever you want. And I went ahead, as usual, and changed the backdrop color to my typical uh, 20% gray or 80% gray, depending on how you look at it. So we're going to create a different shape here. 2,000 meters. Let's not lock this. Wrong direction. All right, so we're going to have one that's 500 meters by 2,000 meters. And then I'm going to just go ahead and flatten our terrain. So there's a couple other, there's a couple ways we can go about making this uh, profile. You can do it with edit shape, but to do that properly, that's probably way too many lines. Yeah. So we can go about making it this way since we're going to be <clears throat> doing basically a side cut. You could do this if you're wanting to form it in general up and down, however you however you see fit in any location. So if we wanted to do it this way, we could adjust the settings. That is not that wide. There we go. So let's create this. Uh, Let's create this profile here. So this is one way to, to create the profile. So we got the top of the dune here. I'm just gonna create a smooth wave structure. And it dips, and then this is the humongous form. So what we've got here, I'm going to make the beach profile a little more smooth. This isn't a huge scale, by the way, so you probably wouldn't have a beachfront that's like this. Let's turn on our water so we can... Uh, so we can reference the water line right here. So at about 39. All right, so we essentially have what I would refer to as a low tide at this point. High tide would be something a little bit higher, maybe 45. This could be something in resembling a high tide situation. 
So that high tide would help create the dunes up above or different berm strengths. So this right here would be a uh, a berm basically whenever the water is at low tide, but now it's almost kind of like a, a sandbar at, at high tide. And then you can see, let me zoom out. This is one of our sandbars out in the middle of the ocean. And you can see these uh, from an aerial view in, in Google Earth or in pictures. Let's go ahead and edit this a tad bit further. It's really hard to see. Nope, too much. One thing about this shader, it's not very good. It's showing, um, I'd like there to be the control to show depths a little bit further. So having transparency a little bit. All right, here we go. This is a pretty decent example. Nope, nope, nope. All right, so this is a pretty good example to be able to see. <clears throat> we have the straight beach, sandbar, sandbar, the dune, the troughs in between, and a sub trough up here on the beach profile. Now, let's, um, let's go ahead and create this in a different way here which is my personal favorite way of doing it. Let's go ahead and turn off our ocean. Well, um, let me do uh, one method before then. So as well as shaping it exactly the way we did it just then, we could also shape it via, if you've got the shape filter here, you could add different shape effects. We're assuming that we are an island here, but even though that this is a <laughs> pretty random, and let's, so you can do different shape nodes to create the, a terraced effect if you want. And then let's move this down here. So seemingly we've created the entire shape of the base shape of the island. And then we're going to add another shape on top of that. And this height is going to be even higher. I'm going to change the level step to be one level further in detail from the one below it for this to work out properly. This is if you're wanting to have ultimate control on the main functions of the terraced effect. This is not my recommended way to go about it. Of course, you can create canyons this way as well. Let's go ahead and just change this to four so that we can get a bottom trough here. And then make it really smooth. And then doing that with the same level, we can kind of almost create an uphill here where the trough would be. So this could be seemingly one other example of a way to do it. Not my preferred method, but um, my favorite method is actually just going to be doing all of this by hand. So we're going to do that now. We're going to add an area. We're just going to fit that to terrain. The show blend map has height map. Make sure the border blending's all the way. And I'm actually going to go ahead and lock this so I don't accidentally move it around. 
All right. So what I like to do is I like to do start off with the flattened and then control the height. So let's say the, the height is starting out at 10 meters above the ground. Let's do it at a make sure our brush strength is set to full maximum and the brush size. Let's go up to 200. All right, so that we need it to be a little bit bigger. All right, we're going to create, why is it? Hmm, my border is actually acting up a little funky than I want it to. Let's see, 30. No, not 300. Doing this makes sure that the exact points that you want are exactly that height. But for some reason, Oh, I had it backwards. Yeah, laugh now. That's pretty bad. <laughs> All right. So this is the, the way that I go about starting out. So everything is super smooth. This is our terraced effect here. This it would be the longshore bar. Now let's lower our brush size a little bit to 300 and let's drop this down to 25. I don't really want that one. Doing all this uh, manually takes a little bit of time, but it's my preferred method, especially it's much easier when you start doing it in section like this isn't quite um, the best method to go from. Let's start this pretty high at 50. I'm going to blend these two a little bit together. But obviously, at probably a one brush strength. This is obviously a very sloppy approach to this uh, process that I originally wanted. Let's make our brush size again, like 150. Okay. So this is starting to look okay. It's not, it's going to take a lot more work. So you can see we got our longshore bar, our smaller bars here in the middle, and our beach profile, which is looking like it needs some help a little bit. Let's bring this to 35. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create some subsets here to kind of talk about what exactly we're gonna be doing in just a second. And then I'm gonna create a little bit of a higher bar here. But not with water. All right, so we're starting to get a good look here. See more morphing, more playing around gets the look that you want. So the next thing here, I want to get a really sharp. Uh, edge. So sometimes 
when we're going to talk about the sediment erosion in a little bit, but sometimes when like a, if the, if you don't really have much of a beach or if there's a storm surge and there's vegetation say up here near the top and all of this is pretty soft uh, terrain, the erosion will erode like almost like a cliff face to the vegetation that's here at the edge. So if I were to draw this, to resemble, which that is really high. It's much higher than it needs to be. So let's lower this a bit. So say the waves come in and then you're gonna have a really sharp edge here, almost kind of like almost kind of like the dunes, but it's a it's a really sharp erosion that takes away all the dirt and pushes it back out and stretches the beach face. And it's not seen everywhere. You have to look based on your uh, global location on how you're wanting to design for on how it's going to affect. Now, let's go ahead and in hopes that this doesn't um, crash on us. Let's go ahead and add a little some effects here. Let's turn off our ocean so that we can have some something to work with here. Now, keep in mind one thing I wanted to say that the uh, littoral zone here from the longshore bar straight up to the top of the dunes could span anywhere from, you know, 10 meters to 10 kilometers. I mean, it, it, it's it's a vast um, variation in, in stretching, so to speak. So sometimes you won't have any shoreline or beach face, uh, especially whenever you have things uh, like really hard sediments or rocks or cliff faces, those obviously don't have any beaches because um, the erosion on that was so intense with high energy waves that it pulverized all the sediment. There's no rivers to bring dirt and sediment from the land into the ocean, which is <clears throat> which is where most of it comes from. And essentially you have no beach face. So let's go ahead and real quick add some filters to this to kind of help brain start this uh, process. So I'm going to add a smooth filter because I want the obviously the sand and everything to be pretty smooth. But I want to go ahead and make the smoothness end right here where our dune edge is or our, our main erosion edge is. So that's at uh, 50 meters, so to speak. So we'll do a height select on that. We'll go up to 50. Let's turn on our heat map to see exactly where we're going. And let's smooth it out, say five. Yeah, right there. And in doing so, I want the smooth strength to be something pretty high. Pretty high. We want all this to be really smooth. And it's really subtle because you have our berm here. There's the beach shoreline. We have our shore, our, um, bars outside this huge trough here another um bar way out in the ocean another small trough this trough could be much deeper than it is right now and then we have our longshore bar that drops really far this is almost going to be just like a cliff face The next filter I want to go ahead and add is a little bit of a root erosion, but I want to keep that erosion mostly to the top portion, mostly where the beach is, because the water is going to erode, obviously, most of any type of um, small erosion or fluvial effects. But if you look at it from a grand perspective, you can set this erosion detail level to cover a wide uh, span, especially just, just have it affect only the large strength values which we'll do here in a minute. Let's go ahead and turn these off. And let's have this filter effect. That was strange. Why did it? Stefan. I found a bug. Anyway, 
let's first set this erosion to be see about 40 so the height select the base of that will be about 40 I need to bump it up to not 20, it's not 20, 50. We want the erosion to really just affect this area. There we go. This is this is a pretty good area here. So it's okay that it affects the up to the beach. Um, where the water is breaking and a little bit of this, um, the bars out out front, because it's going to have some effect. Because you'll see you'll see that quite um, quite well. Let's just keep increasing this until we can see some of the major effect. It's obviously not going to show a whole lot on us right now because we are. Wow, it's really not going to, we were really smoothing this out a lot. There's no information right here. Let me, let me increase this because this is really flat. So there's no erosion that's going to happen here. So what I want to do is just go ahead and raise this a tab. I do not want to do continuous painting. And let's say our brush size is 0.1. We'll, we'll give that a go. And we'll use this um, nice beveled edge here. There we go. We're just trying to get some effects going on here. All right, done editing that. Let's go back to our filters. All right, this is starting to be a little bit what I want, not too much. See, this is a little bit too much in this area, but I still want the mass uh, amounts of strength to uh, to take part in. Hey, Stefan, welcome, welcome. All right, let's turn our strength down, strength level down a little bit on this so that we can flatten out some of these effects. Still a little bit too strong. It's not bad. So seemingly this edge isn't exactly at all what I was hoping it would be. This doesn't need to be so well it could be. It needs a, this needs a lot of work. So this could be a river um uh, the mouth of a river that's coming down. We could flatten out a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that actually. Let's make our brush size really tiny. And then we're going to go down. All right, so we're seemingly creating Not a very good one, at least. All right, let's just assume that this is a, a little bit of a mouth edge. <laughs> no problem, Stefan. You have a you have a good meeting. We'll see you later in the recording, perhaps. That's no problem. This is a terrible example of a, of a river coming out, but I'm just trying to illustrate 
the point that sometimes these erosion effects could take place. Let's go ahead and um, actually extend this out. We'll create a little bit of a of an opening. 0 0.05. Obviously, this computer does not like smooth brush strokes. It, it works, but not with the, um, let's actually, let's turn off filters. Yeah, there we go. Turning off filters helps tremendously. And this effect. This is really huge. I mean, this is... The scale of this is not what you would want. The scale of this, I mean, this thing is almost 10 meters in height. The the scale that I'm talking about, what this was supposed to be, is like maybe half a meter, like just, or, you know, anywhere from half a meter to three meters. This is pretty, pretty large in scale. I'm just trying to show you graphically um, what we're trying to achieve. All right, let's just uh, quickly go back and check out what our ocean looks like. Terrible. <laughs> of course, this is our beach beach face. So our erosion has seemingly done away with a lot. So we could we could presume that. Um, Let's go back to 37 on ocean height. Ignore these spots. These need to be filled in or wouldn't be there. But let's presume that this is the, the beach face or more likely, yeah, this is the beach face. So it's got our sandbar here and the we got our a little bit of a berm here and all of our erosion is coming downhill into opening out into the sand here, opening out into the ocean. So this is one um, method that we could do about it. I'm going to create another one later that should be a little bit better than this and go by smoothing all this out. But there's different, there's different ways we could go about creating this, uh, actual beach profile, which I'm actually about to show here in just a few moments. But seemingly, the point is to understand what the long beach profile looks like. Usually for me, I just want to add one more. I usually add one more smooth after all of the erosion is concerned. And this one, I'll have it based off the ocean level. Whoops. Negative 500. And then we'll do it right at the ocean line. Ignore these black spots. So what, what's really good is underneath the water, the amount of smoothness is going to be a lot greater, a lot, lot greater than the amount of smoothness of uh, even just the temporary wet sand or the dry sand on top. It's going to be, you know, really, really glassy, basically. So you need to account for um, if you're wanting to have underwater profiles, to really bump up the smoothness of the underwater. So it's really smooth now. You can see our longshore bar here, our regular bar, smaller bar, and then we have our beach berm and our upper shore beach um, beach dunes. So 
we're going to come into this shape here in a little bit. Whoop. All right, I had to restart voice meter. Can you guys hear me okay? I hope that uh, it doesn't sound very demonic as it was in my ear just a minute ago. All right, so this is one method to creating the shore profile. And I personally prefer doing the the filter, or sorry, the area and editing the height map. We're going to create a small island at the end of the stream to kind of tie everything that we're learning in together. But the next thing I want to do is actually, let's go ahead and turn off erosion because it's adding way too much right now. The next thing I want to do is go over... which I will get to in just a second. So now we've talked about the shore profile and from the entire littoral zone, but let's move into more variations to the, this profile and how things can vary drastically in a more specific beach profile section. So back, let's go back here. So basically we have in general made this entire, uh, entire form. But what I want to do is I want to focus primarily in the beach zone and a little bit of the upper shore. This, these uh, erosion effects and these profile effects just right here that you can see mainly in, in camera. What we're going to be doing is beach. Profiles, that is not an A. The uh, computer's having a tough time today. All right. So the beach profile itself can vary drastic distances as well as, as, as the same way that I've talked about the littoral zone in general. So they could be very short or very long, or as I've mentioned before with cliffs and really uh, rough terrain, they don't even have to exist at all. So let's start off by understanding a few different um, ways that create the beach profiles. And the number one thing is let's begin with understanding wave breaks. So ah, that's two words. So wave breaks, <clears throat> there are three types. One, we have spilling breaks or what's called spilling breakers. And these, let's say we have a really flat beach. These are more pro uh, prominent in really flat beaches. We have our ocean level here. And then a spilling break is just really really smooth. And then you have a little bit of foam here at the top, but they don't really crest so much. They just kind of, if they do crest, it's really at the, at the base of the, um, of the slope, but it's really smooth, really long beaches, kind of like, um, Hey, welcome, Goober Dome. Welcome. Um, spilling breakers are more seen. So in really long beaches, like the, uh, East coast of, um, United States or Florida, for example, they have really deep beaches, really long beaches, and you see uh, more so spilling breaks there. The second type is plunging breaks. Plunging breakers. And this one is on medium to, to steep. So basically we've got this is our beach profile. Ah, thank you. Thanks for the follow. So we've got our beach profile and we got one small berm here, or sorry, one small bar. We've got our ocean level. And then these are typical especially when you have, it's uh, like I said, medium to steep, but especially when you have a lot of uh, bars right in the ocean, but it occurs even if it's just a smooth um, 
a smooth profile with no bars. It'll happen on a medium to steep uh, profiles. But these are the ones that you see that crest a lot. And then they they smash and create all the, all the foam. So these are really good wave breakers, as I like to say. Number three, our third and final type of wave breaks are called surging breakers. Now these are primarily on very steep, uh, very steep, very short beaches. So our profile could be really steep. And our beach, our, our ocean level, sorry. That was crazy. Our, our ocean level here. And these don't so, don't so much crash like plunging breakers do, but they kind of just roll roll up the hill. So the even though that the um the it's a pretty large wave, they kind of just roll up the hill and then they create a lot of foam in this area. So they're really they're kind of smooth, but they create a lot of foam right out the beach. And I know it's hard to kind of render really good foam in 3D programs, but that's the type of um breakers you have. Now this is important to know because depending on the type of waves or that you're going to have or seemingly kind of designed for depends on the type of uh, beach profile, as you can see here. So the steep, long and short, or also the types of sediment, which we're going to get into a second. So these type of these three different categories of wave breaks are a direct relation to wave energy strengths and sediment densities. So in general, steeper beach profiles are typically seen in low energy waves and flatter uh, profiles are seen more in high energy storm waves type, type situations. Now, the as far as sediments are concerned, sediments, we've got coarse grains and fine grains. So coarse grains are more seen in high energy coasts and they have steeper prof steeper uh, beach profiles. Fine grains are more seen in moderate to low energy coasts and they're more seen in flatter profiles. The reason is, is because with sediment, fine grain gets transported easier as it weighs less. So you get to, you see it more further out into the trough areas and those fine grains uh, build up um, build up berms and so essentially this gets pushed can get pushed all the way to the lower shore so let's go back to our number two drawing here so those can be get pushed all the way back even to the the lower shore here and Coarse grains are seen mostly on the upper shore of the upper shore areas where they don't take a lot of the beating. And since coarse grains are heavier, then they stick around longer and they sit on top of all the fine grains because the fine grains filter in between all the coarse grains, as you would imagine. So there are situations where you can find fine grains underneath coarse grains on, on the upper shore and but you don't see that a whole lot. You have to dig down to find it. That's why when you dig down um, really deep, the top level of the beaches are, even though it feels soft to us, it's really considered coarse grains. You, the top feels pretty um, coarse in general. And when you dig deeper, you could find really soft. Usually it's the wet sand that's the, uh, the fine grain underneath. And that process is called bed armoring. So the coarse grains on top of the fine grains, it's bed armoring. Not entirely important to know, but it is important to know that if you're going to, say, texture um, a beach, um, the different textures between a coarse grain and a fine grain could be completely different depending if you're going to have a really um, long beach, a short beach, or a steep beach. Just a few, uh, just a few things to consider. The other things that can really affect, which I'm going to, let me create and hide this. One, another thing that could really have a huge effect on 
the way the beach profiles are is the tidal range. Now, as I'm sure a lot of you know, that tides are mainly generated by the gravity of the sun and the moon. So we have Earth here, and we have the moon. Sun's way over here. Seemingly, the oceans create an oval bad drawing. So the moon is pulling water this direction and as an effect is pushing water in that direction. The sun over here is also having a constant pull effect. So we don't have a full grasp on it being a perfect um, oval or eclipse, but in conjunction, the moon and the sun work together to have a high tide and low tide twice a day. Um, if you've got the moon, I believe if you've got the moon in the same spot as the sun or the opposite spot of the sun, um, the tides are even higher and those are created by the different seasons. But let me, that's going to take way too long. So uh, beaches with tidal ranges have, <clears throat> sorry, beaches with very large tidal ranges. So when the tide is the highest from its normal state, have smaller upper shore faces. So they're, so they're, um, their upper shore here isn't quite so long. And the reason being for that is, is they erode quicker. So since they erode quicker, the longshore bar here is much further up because there's not a whole lot of um, transition that's going to be happening. So it's going to erode even more and it's going to smooth things out. So remember that if you have a place that has a high tide, it's going to erode a lot more on the upper shore face. So it'll be smaller. But you have to also know where larger tide ranges occur, which is mostly in coves or enclosed spaces. So say, for example, uh, in plan, so you have your, your land here, for example. Well, say in this spot, you've got a, you've got a cove. All right, so this, this is our ocean area, and this is our land. So this is our cove area. We have the regular beach and we have our cove. So when water comes in, when water comes in from the high tide in a cove, it has nowhere really to go. Out here, it, it's the energy of, the, um, of that tide is dis dispersed evenly across an even surface. But when it's forced into a tight area, you're going to get a really high tide in along the edge, the inner edge of the uh, of the cove here because it has no physical place to go. Like if it could go in, inland, it could go inland and you can create an inland flood or it usually it's really on, um, you can see it a lot in cliff faces. So the cliffs in some areas will have a high tide that's, you know, 50 meters, 50 meters tall. This is, um, let me show you an example of this real quick. Whoop. Okay, so for in the state, in the, uh, come on now, in the, uh, <clears throat> near the U.S., for example, this is really seen right here. This is one of the highest tide places. You can see the Bay of Fundy. I think it's, I think that's the right location. But yeah, coves and bays like this, so at high tide, there's nowhere for this water to really go in these in these alcoves here. You know, when it's open water or it's across an entire ocean, the energy is more evenly dispersed. But I believe this area is an area, or even right here near St. Andrews, these areas can see tides, I believe, up to 60, 60 meters high, which is insane. You know, places like... Well, that's a that's not a cove. That's got a river alcove, or even notches like this will receive pretty high tides. Or right here in Texas, these coves right here, I bet these receive some pretty high tides. 
And um, these are pretty interesting. We'll get to these in a little bit, but these are essentially um, what they call, uh, I forgot the term for it. They're essentially berms, but they're they're island, island-esque berms that are unnatural or current that help protect the uh, the inland part. So that's just uh, one example. Coves and uh, enclosed areas will have more of a higher tide. Now, shorter tide ranges occur in the open oceans and large oceans, as I've talked about, because the energy of that high tide isn't forced against a hard surface like a cove, so it's evenly distributed everywhere. I hope that's making some sense for you, for you guys. I don't mean to be for this to be a science lesson. It's really about understanding, um, you know, the shapes of what our shorelines are going to be. So, in in light of that, one other thing that we could look at is cliffs. Now, cliff erosion is a little bit different than beach erosion. So, and the cliffs usually have no beach profile whatsoever. So the water is hitting straight at the beach. So for example, we have our uh we have our cliff here. We're just I'm gonna dive into this a little bit. All right. So then we have the ocean water right there. So the cliff face and then this could be part of some berms and sediments down below, but it's usually these these areas right at the very below are usually pretty pretty rocky. So all the rock that's fallen off the cliff is going to create this really rocky surface. There's going to be some really hard sediments down here. It's not going to um, uh, going to have a whole lot of sediments there. You're going to have that mostly in your cove cove areas as well. So what happens with um, cliff erosion is you have to understand that ongoing erosion for cliffs will almost never be rebuilt naturally. So to have a beach profile here at a cliff will almost never happen unless, say, the um, say the ocean level dropped and stayed, stayed really low, and then you have all this rain bringing sediments over top the cliff, and then the sediments here create uh, long-going sand. Then, potentially, you could have um, an, a new beach front at uh, a cliff edge, but it's not... Likely if you have this situation where it's a sheer drop cliff and then the, the water. So usually when a cliff is right at the edge of the ocean, they it's a very fast process for erosion if it's soft rock. And if it's hard, if the part of the rock is really hard, it's going to stay there a lot longer. So when waves, when waves topple and they slam into, into the, uh, the cliff here, that water is going to be forced into little little voids, little air pockets inside the cliff. And after enough times of the waves slamming and slamming in there, all the soft rock is just going to fall off or crack and crumble, and the hard rock is going to remain. That's why sometimes on, um, like uh, in certain areas where you can see these massive little uh, what look like rock pillars sticking out in the middle of the ocean. You kind of see the insides of them are curved. They got some plants at the very top. Um, that's what that is. So the the distance, the in-between spot between these two cliffs and this rock face is really soft rock. So it just broke away. So going back to this, with enough wave and rock pressure, you're going to get these rocks to essentially crumble off and then your new cliff profile you know it's going to be eroded there a little bit you're going to get a new cliff profile that could seemingly look something like this that's why that's why you see a lot of that happening where the tops of the rocks where water isn't touching is car is well sorry the tops of the rocks of the cliff are just fine they don't have any problems with it and then the bottom of the cliff near the ocean is really is carved in where the water has eroded it over time and it takes a lot of time and the only way for a rock to escape from the top is if once this breaks away and all that weight it just crumbles and crashes and then you have these large rock deposits in the um, in the ocean floor here 
and one of the and that whole process where water forcing its way in is uh, called hydrostatic pressure. Gets into those cracks, creates air bubbles, um, especially in air in climates where there's a huge drastic change between these hot summers and, and cold winters. That hot and cold will crack, make that cracking effect happen even faster. So that's just um, something to consider whenever you get into uh, talking about cliff faces. All right, let's create. Whoops. All right, so now what we're going to transition ourselves into is more specifically with understanding sediments, with understanding the tidal ranges that we just talked about, and understanding the, the ways of the fine grain and coarse grains, let's move into what's called rhythmic shoreline features. All right, so rhythmic shoreline, shoreline features. So this is broken down into what's called... We have beach cusps. So if you look at, especially um, this happens mostly in the swash zone. All right, so the swash beach cusps in the swash zone are when you look at the water profile against the beach, the sand almost has a wave effect. So the beach profile and plan is a wave effect. So you have the ocean coming in and then you have the beach here. And it's going to be primarily in the swash zone or right there where the wave breaks against the sand. And this happens at a really small scale. So you're talking about this distance being anywhere from one to 10 meters, so to speak. So you have a lot of these uh, wavy lines. The next one is mega cusps, which I'm going to focus on even more so here. And that's in the surf zone or in the upper shore, as you as you'd imagine. That's with the same um, wave effect that you see from the air, but instead of one to ten meters happening, this is a anywhere from uh, say 10 to 100 meters plus i mean it could be it could be pretty pretty long maybe let's add 200 meters plus it could it's a much more wider effect on the uh, the terrain now the last one which you won't see unless we're going to be making some pretty large terrain is just large scale shoreline cusps now these are beyond the surf zone, so these are the the offshore effects. So beyond surf Z. So these are also wave effects, but you're talking anywhere from, you know, five like, sorry, anywhere from one kilometer to a hundred kilometers. So it's. It's a really long effect. And you'll see, especially if you look at the coastlines, if there's a coastline that comes down, you'll see it, you'll see some of them do do this. Or they'll do this. And these look like waves, but they're really long, several kilometers, several miles long. So that's something to consider when you're creating a large scale. So when it comes to Beach profiles, you have to think about what's the large scale of it going to be like. And then how does the large scale affect the mega cusp area? And how does the mega cusp area affect the beach area? There's a lot of things to consider in that area, but let's let's focus on the mega cusps. So mega cusps can be bisectioned into what's called rhythmic bar systems. Now these are influence mega cusps and wave lengths. So the wave lengths have a huge impact on this, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to talk about two different types of rhythmic bar systems. That's 
Chris-centric. Yeah. Chris-centric bars and transverse bars. All right, so we have Chris-centric bars and transverse bars. So what do those look like? Well, let me, uh, <laughs> let me break down my notes here, and I'll show you exactly how those are produced. All right, so for Chris-centric bars, bars, these bars are under undulating. They're smooth, wave-like view in plan. So they look almost kind of like horns pointed shoreward, and the bays part of it are pointed seaward. And what creates these are different series of rip channels and rip currents in the different locations, as well as the uh, longshore currents. So let's um, let's create a Chris-centric bar here. So in plan, we have our, let's think of this as our mega cusp. So when wave energy comes in, it hits, it hits the, um, Let's think of this dash here as the breaking zone. So the mass transport comes in, hits the shore, and then that water has to come back out somewhere, right? So once that water hits the shore, wherever it hits, it has to transfer laterally. So that's what this area here is called the um, longshore currents in this direction or the lateral currents. As, and then once this comes in from this side, this comes in from this side, it creates lateral currents in this direction. And then as a result, it the water washes up on the land, brings sediment with it, it drags these the uh, the shoreline out, and then you've got the water coming right back out into the ocean here. And this channel here and this channel here are the rip currents or rip channels. But they're but these channels are carrying all the sediments back into play. So underneath the water, those sediments are creating all sorts of these bars, these sandbars underneath the water are coming right back out. They're getting hit by this wave. Let's do it on this side. And then it's just a continuous cycle. So crescent bars are, as you imagine, they're crescent in shape. There are several other shapes that these could be. Is crescentic bars are really close to transverse bars, especially if you've got a wave current that is really far laterally. This this whole wave, uh, this whole crescent bar could be misshapen into something like um, so. Instead of it being a, a full crescent moon bar, it could be, you know, really mis misshapen into something like this, and then you have more of them off to the side. So especially with lateral movements, that's a lot to take in. So these can influence um, mega cusps. So this area here is the mega cusps and as well as how it affects the terrain up here. These can influence the mega cusp in two ways. We have direct, directly or indirectly. So directly the bars and the horns like this are actually touching the shore face. So you have part of this is actually influencing the shore face. So indirectly is a bar or shoreline that is separated by a trough. So if we've got a trough through here, that's basically just, you know, a deeper part trough, beach, bar. This bar is the crescentric bar that we have right here. So indirectly is the way we first drew it is where this bar is not touching the, the shoreline here. So we can move straight into how 
these are very similar to transverse bars. So for transverse bars, let's see, we have got our shoreline here. Transverse bars are running perpendicularly to the shoreline. They're separated by troughs or between bars or between other bars. So transverse bars are basically just, let me get my red here. Out in the ocean, we kind of drew, we kind of did it in World Creator 2 earlier. They're just a, a bar out in the ocean that runs either perpendicularly, sorry, either parallel with it, or in most cases, a transverse bar is more so seen running perpendicularly to the shoreline. So And they could presume different shapes. So if, if these two transverse bars co uh, connect, they would be a crescentric bar. So these types of things, you know, they can even curve. You can even curve some. So these are created by different rip currents. They're coming in, coming out. And then the sediment is building up in between um, creating the transverse bars. So rip currents can concentrate at the trough areas, making them rip channels, so to speak. So down current and up current oblique angles. So basically, so see how this transverse bar is a little curved. This could be, say, down current. So this current here is pushing against this end, so it's stretching it out, or up, up current would be performing something like this. Even an up current lateral movement could be doing this against these bars, down current this way. Um, it's not important to know that, just know that these transverse bars could be shaped in a few different ways, of which if we want to, let's say, say this is our each here with no C. All right, so transverse bars could also have three different types. They could be called TBR bars, which occur at the shoreline connecting usually um, in combination with concentric bars. So if a transverse bar is, you know, touching the beach head and has a connection somehow with a concentric bar, you know, that little bit is separating the two. This is a TBR bar here. They've got the uh, medium energy finger bars. So they're kind of like on this, the side of concentric bars, but they're pretty wide. They're, they're micro tidal. So they could be, um, you know, these basically are medium uh, energy finger bars. So they're kind of wide. They could, they could bleed out a little bit. But the other one is called long finger bars. So they're, they're a curve, they occur in low to medium energy beaches. Um, they don't have any parallel bars to them, but they are super tiny in their currents, which is why they're called long fingernail bars. Not fingernail bars, just long, long finger bars. And you'll see that these transverse bars can also lead into um, are very similar in other aspects to some of the large scale features. So we talked about the um, the large um, shoreline cusp features that affect a really wide uh, range of um, of land. So these are called large scale shoreline features. So they could also be broken down in a few ways. So we have shoreline sand waves, which as I've talked about, is just a, a really long shoreline that looks something like this. And like I said, we're talking, we're talking like, you know, 10 to a, a thousand kilometers, so to speak. I mean, these can happen really long. We can have something called cuspid four four lands, which if you see, um, you have. Let's just take a flat beach here, 
and it comes up and down. Obviously, these this flat area is unrealistic, but if you have a really long piece that sticks out, or even if it's a really long piece that does something similar to this shape for a really long uh, size, these are called um, cuspids. And this cuspid is very similar to something called sandy spites or sandy spits. So a sandy spit is basically something that looks like this. And then all the sand, all the um, uh, lateral movement of water is pushing this way and it's got a lot of sand collecting here. And then you have a small sand deposit here and then it picks back up on this side. This is just what this, how this is created. It could be man-made to help lateral erosion or it could be naturally made where uh, heavy sands and heavy rocks have built up a, uh, essentially a, an offshore dune here and all of this sediment is being collected in this area, building it up. So all the water has to move right back out and then it creates an eddy here and then has to rebuild the uh, the shore. A lot of these are seen man-made, but you can see them uh, happen a lot in natural occurrences. <laughs> I did not expect to teach so much today, especially if it were not in um, uh, World Creator as much as I'd like, but we're going to get to it. We're going to get to that uh, that piece. There's a lot of uh, uh, pieces to beachfronts. So the next thing I wanted to go over is let's Let's actually take all of this that we've learned back in the World Creator 2. So let's uh, minimize this. All right, so back in here, why don't we remove the erosion? And let's go back to the... Um, oops, sorry. Let's go back to our height map adjustment. So let's go ahead and just um, do raise. Let's raise it 0.2. All right. So our beachfront, I believe, was right here. Verify that. All right. Our beachfront is right there. All right. You can kind of see already just by naturally uh, forming in World Creator, we have here a, a bar system. But, uh, but this bar is running parallel to the uh, to the shore. Not so much parallel here, but let's go ahead and create some crescentric bars. So let's keep the ocean up and hope that my computer doesn't hate me. All right, so let's, if you hold shift while you click, it removes it. And wow, we removed so much just then. Way too much. Uh, point two, way too much. Let's go ahead. What level is this? 36. I'm going to have to fix this now. All right. I fixed it a little bit. Let's try 0 0.05 because let's hope that uh, what we've got is working here. And so let's try and turn off multi-frame generation so I can have a have you guys experience a better experience. So let's edit the height map. Now let's create a crescentric bar. So like I said, shift click and I just want to erase some of this stuff way out here. I'm just doing this for a clean palette right now. And I'll I'll smooth it all out in a minute. Looks like a pretty bad uh, land here. All right, so, so for a crescentric moon. I know this is going above land, but...
I'll smooth all this out in a second. All right, so we have crescentric bars here. So you can see water is coming in this way, ripping it out. And this beach profile. are a little drastic as far as a little drastic as far as what it's supposed to represent but we can kind of see what the point is here new nope, wrong direction hold shift I want to drop this just below the water line. All right, just below the water line. All right. All right, so seemingly, let's go ahead and just uh, smooth some of this out. All right, so here, even though it's kind of we have a ever so slightly crescentric bar, so water comes in this direction, rip currents bring it back out, waves hit it, and try and bring it back in. The same could be said the other direction, say if water was primarily coming in this way it was scooping it out and then bringing it out to form the uh, crescentric bar so water it's it's almost unpredictable in a lot of cases but just know that with crescentric bars that the horns usually are in the sh in this very similar shape you don't have to form these exactly into c's you could you can morph them some so say uh Say you wanted to drag this out this way and you wanted to lower this side. And you wanted to increase this end. There's a lot of There's a lot of variations you can make between different beach faces. Let me lower some of that. So this is almost a seemingly a combination between uh, crescentric bars and we're getting into transverse bars. Now transverse bars, let's go ahead and flatten this out. Uh, what level is this? 33. So transverse bars are a much different animal. Maybe not much different animal, but they're pretty similar. Let's do some the fingerling uh, bars. So this whole thing here would be described as the megacusp area. And these little bits here that we're imagining in our minds would be the beach cusps. And this whole thing way down here would be the long shore. But the mega cusp for the transverse bars, let's see if we can't um, 
let's see if we can't increase these a tad. So 36. We're going to have some. Oh, let's see. There we go. Have a little one out here. We can even curve it up a little bit. Let's make a half C shape here. These might not be important so much um, when you're trying just to create the above ground. Like if you're using World Creator just to get that above ground sense, then uh, doing these bars to kind of represent underwater maybe not be so important, but to understand what these bars do to the beachhead could uh could prove you really useful. So for example, like I want all of this to be a very similar height and then transition out into these transverse bars. Let's pop it up to 38. Let's make this beach a little flatter because transverse bars don't have an enormous effect on how the beach profile and plan are, but their rip current surely can. So say we wanted to, that's not what I want. Say we needed to bring that in, wherever this is, bring that in. It, it the, They have a big effect on the beach uh, beach cuss size. So they're really wavy. Something like that. You could play around with this as much as you as you need. Sometimes out here in the middle of the ocean, uh, they collect a little bit more. Right here at this at this head that kind of almost looks like a uh, a spite or a spit, as I imagine they're called. You you guys uh, kind of getting the picture here. Now, let's start a new project because I want to make a quick island for you guys here before we go. How long have we been running for? An hour and thirty seven minutes. Okay. No, I don't want to. No. All right, we'll just use this um, size terrain. Soil depth one. And then I'm just going to go ahead and flatten the entire terrain. All right, so let's create our uh, quick island here. We're going to fit to terrain. We're going to lock that sucker because I don't want it to move. has a height map. Oh, I'm editing the blend map. Pfft. All right. So now let's do flatten. And let's say we want this really small island to be just 10 meters above um, above the ocean level. So brush size, let's say 500. All right, let's say that is what, well, first of all, Let's do something, let's do something different. Let's say, let's create the shelf 
the longshore shelf of the island instead of talking about just the island itself. So let's make this be like 60 meters in height. So let's create, we're creating the, the main shelf. And these are usually pretty large like this, pretty smooth. Um, I'm going to try and make a, a U-shaped uh, island here. So, and then I'm going to just do negative 30 and the brush strength be 50. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I just want some, even though I just bumped in there. I want some negative value here. So it looks a little bit more realistic. Trying to rem remove my brush strokes here, even though you're, you're not going to see them. Just want it to look better. All right, so that's okay. This is okay for now. So instead of that, what's this? 60. Let's drop down to because we're gonna make we're gonna make the trough of it as well. So let's drop down to uh, 55. No, just one. Let's make this like 200. And I don't want it to be super sharp since it's going to be a nice trough. I want it to be a little smooth. So let's So what we're doing here is we're creating the trough area between our long shore bar and our upper shores. I bet you guys are like finally in the world creator too. He's been in Photoshop. He's messed up Photoshop so much. Okay. And now we're going to go up to 65. That way we can increase this. And I want this to be ever so slightly. And you're not going to have the same equal parts around the whole thing. Keep in mind, you're not going to always have... Um, everything be so flat. There's going to be a lot of variation, which is why, um, you know, these large scale erosion effects were going to come into handy. Like I may want this little bit to be a little bit higher. Just because. And we did 65, so let's drop it to... Sixty three and do one for the inside. And we're basically just layering it up from bottom to top. And this will help sell help sell our shape. And I want one one deep one here. I'm going back to 60. All right, so now let's build the actual island piece. So we have the outer bar here, which this could probably be flattened out a tad. So let's do 0.7. Because I don't want the, the this end to look so uh, strongly terraced because my island's going to be on this side. So I'm going to seemingly have most of the erosion filter down this way. 
All right, so let's go up to 75. As, so 75, we're going to say 75 is our beachhead. So let's... I want this side to be kind of fat and the other side to be a little thin. And maybe an, a small island out here or something. These are pretty fat, but we're going to erode them quite heavily here in just a moment. So I want the max height of the island to be just six meters above where the beach face that I'm assuming is. So let's put six meters above that. So 81. And I need to make sure this is 50 and that is 0.7 still. So. Say I want this edge to be kind of steep. A little bit. I want some break up there. And since this is kind of a cove, I want most of the beach or um, sand to kind of deposit here and not so much this side. This, this can have a good um, sand deposit because it'll get the wave effects from this side, but not this head. It'll be kind of eroded a little bit more. Because on coves like this, sand, especially if the waves are coming in this way, all the sand is going to be accumulating mostly where that cove is. All right, now let's make a, actually let's take this area and let it affect s level step seven. And then now I want the filters, let's apply a smooth, just a general smooth filter across the entire thing, let's say up to, up to two, because this is gonna be an island, so we need it to be pretty smooth. So even though this is pretty large, Can actually lower this side some because most of I like most of the effect of this terrace to be out front. So let's go ahead and lower this. But we only want to lower it point one. Let's see. Maybe point five, point zero five. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the circles here are terrible but we're likely not gonna see those right here because I just wanna embrace this piece. So let's set our water level to 70. Whoops. Let's go our ocean level and set it to 70. All right, you see what I'm, I'm trying to achieve here? We've got the, you can see the, uh, longshore bar way out there that's creating the shape you can kind of see it here but i want to smooth out a little bit more of this edge there we go
Have we got our stuff something that looks like an island or what? I might be just boasting there for a little bit. Let's go back to our ocean, set this to 72. Seventy one. All right, there we go. And now, on I want this side to have most of our uh, bars. So let's go back to our uh, default area here. Let's do a raise. Arrays on 20, let's do 0 0.08. All right, well now we're going to do some combinations of transverse and um, uh, crescentric bars here. So let's... That's not what I wanted. Let's see. Let's change this water level to, let's see, it was 71. I want this to still be part of the beach. There we go. As well as this. I want this part to still be flat like a beach. All right, so we got a beach and a beach. And I'm still wanting to, yeah, even though these are really large uh, Christcentric bars. Very large concentric bars. Let's make some smaller ones because these are seemingly 10 meters wide, which is really huge. But there's nothing saying you can't get those those size bars. Obviously, this could take a very long time of back and forth and back and forth. 
But I'm just trying to get the point to you guys real quick. All right. So let's just um, drop that. Let's go ahead and add some filters to kind of help break this up. So let's add another smooth filter. But I want this one to be based on the relative to ocean, negative 500, obviously. Let's make our smoothness. Well, I said negative 500. All right, so this one, let's make it really smooth. And before that, let's go ahead and add um, hills. Have that one be re relative to ocean, but let's go up five meters high. There we go. A little bit of hill effect. Right. Right here on our beach edge. Let's also I want to go ahead and add a tad. Let me turn on a multi-frame generator. I want to go ahead and add fluvial, but I want it just to be ever so slightly subtle because I don't want the effect to be too overpowering. And obviously it just needs to affect Just a little bit. There we go. And so let's assume this is high tide. And if we drop it 10 meters for a low tide or a little, little bit, maybe too much. This could be low tide, where you're starting to expose a lot more. And even though because I did some things relative to ocean, it's more exposed now. So the this needs to be more smooth. And the erosion doesn't need to happen down here. But there are just some of the things to consider with uh, beach erosion. All right. Well, Thank you guys very much for tuning in. This was a little bit longer than normal. Um, I just wanted to go over a few of the erosion, or sorry, the beach profile faces. Uh, this was a very quick example. Uh, it didn't do it a whole lot of justice as opposed to just um, creating a flat beach and coming up with it. But there are just some different things to understand between the bars and how those affect the beach fronts, uh, different erosion types. So... Um, thank you guys very much for joining and I will see you in the next one.